Hello everybody and welcome back to some Mega Modded Gungeon. We are back again. Never Named is of course still here, as you Ni probably hao. heard in last week's episode. Um, we're recording more than one. Ni hao indeed. Ora, ni hao. Konnichiwa. Isn't that goodbye? Which one's goodbye? I think Konnichiwa is hello. I can't remember. Ni hao is hello and Kyora is hello. I don't know other languages very well, I'll be honest. <clears throat> Neither do I, but I remember how to say hello. I don't. I remember not bonjour, and that's about it. No, 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 not even. I don't say hello to anyone. I immediately say I goodbye. Just... Oh my god, goodbye, it's so good to meet you. <laughs> it's the most sarcastic thing ever. Like, those antisocial passages from someone. Oh my god, goodbye. <laughs> you say it with that upbeat tone. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, tips the scale of fortune slightly in your favour. A charm with a four-leaf clover attached to it, unsurprisingly not affiliated with the cereal brand. Interesting. We also have a swan off. <laughs> I love that. Um, and the steak launcher. Swan. Hey, that's pretty cool. Fish. It's a, it's a fish shotgun. I love it. Also, you know that the clover charm is authentic because Bunny's Irish. Is Bunny Irish? I yes. literally never knew that. Bunny is Bunny is a big tough Irishman. Oh eh. Yeah. It's, it's real sexy. <laughs> I like the way the uh the, the little punk honker keeps um doing little love hearts every now and again. At some point I really ought to backport um exit the gungeon items to enter the gungeon. That would be a really good idea, yeah. There's a lot because, from Exit the Gungeon that could make its way in. Yeah, obviously stuff that relies on the combo system would need to be reworked a little. Yeah. But, Whatever uh, happened to the hat mod? I know that was in progress. Yeah, it still isn't uh, technically in progress. There's just been a lot of distractions. That's fair. Yeah. I love this gun. You know, modding's hard, you know... Oh, 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 so strike a pose on a Cadillac. I, uh, um, I know because I don't do any of it. <laughs> yeah, we were just having problems with some stuff, and it's mostly done. It just needs refining and integration into Alexandria. Yeah. For those of you that don't know what we're talking about, by the way, in uh, Exit the Breach, there is... Uh, exit the Gungeon, exit sorry. Exit the Gungeon. Exit the Gungeon, sorry. There is a, Once more a system. My, my Exit mod will be called Once exit. More Out of the Breach. <laughs> um, but anyways, there's a, a system in that game where you can wear hats uh, and unlock various different hats. And they have little animations when you roll and stuff like that, or jump, whatever it is in that game. Um, and uh, yeah, um, they've been making that that into a reality for Gungeon, which I'm super excited for. But it's, as he just said, pretty much put on the back burner for now because there's a lot of other more important things to be working on. Yeah. We need to like sort out our unlocks and stuff. And yeah, that's a big wanna... part of it, isn't it? The idea is that Alexandria will allow for hat the way hats function. And yeah. then other mods, like, I'm considering that a hat pack would be a separate mod. Yeah. This is uh, one of my most mundane uh, guanstones, but also one of my favorites because it just looks so cool. Yeah, that's exactly, uh, it's exactly why I took it, because I remember it from last time I had it, and it is really cool. Also, did we just get fucking Godhead? We did. No, you didn't. You got aura bullets. It's, it's just fuck. it's just Godhead. It just doesn't have her name, but it is just Godhead. Got in the head. What up, Matt boy? You need to get uh, the my... oh, uh, shit. tree tree room. I always forget about the damn tree room. By the way, I, I've seen that like the fish confuse enemies sometimes when it hits them, which is um, just how the uh, fish in the game work, but I like to think it's not because it's a fish hitting them, it's just they're so confused to see a swan launch fish at them that it confuses them. Yeah, it's like trying to feed them, you know? <laughs> Mama bird feeding baby bird, yeah. vomiting up fish. <laughs> oh, there is actually a word 
for like feeding, like vomiting up regurgitation of children. <laughs> I think it's called like gastric milk or something. Gastric milk. Something like that, yeah. No comment. Liking this RGG, but I can't tell if the damage is coming from the RGG or the aura bullets. Have you heard of gastric brooding? Yes, but I don't remember, and it was definitely you that told me about it. <laughs> Basically, it's a thing that uh, I it's like a very specific species it's like of frogs, frogs, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Would do, yeah. Where they would grow their tadpoles inside their uh, inside their own uh, stomachs. They would eat their own eggs, the and they would let their eggs place. develop in their stomach. Yeah, I love cr like weird, crazy little, crazy little creatures, crazy little, crazy little dudes, crazy little dudes. Did you get the thing from the adventure? Yeah, that's the RGG. Oh, I wasn't paying attention. I got the mimic whistle. Summons mimics. I can't currently use it. I think you have to use it in combat, maybe. Yeah, we'll, we'll find out. Also, you are so lucky that you got a key back from that chest. Oh shit, I for- Do you know, I completely forgot that the locks were on the underneath of the tree now. I was just like, oh cool, it's free, I can open this chest. Yeah, I'm very lucky I got a key back. I completely forgot. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, but you opened the chest before I could open my mouth. <laughs> yeah, that was just me being very dumb. I can't remember, does the RGG change every floor, or does this one stay no. the same? The RGG changes between runs. Okay. The RGG is in a good state for us right now, so I'm happy with that. Yeah. You're thinking, you get it confused with, uh... I do, yes. Missing With Gano. Missing Gano. I want to do a... I want to do a Missing Gano companion based on another, uh... Pokemon glitch, kind of like it. Ooh, that'd be cool. Pokemon glitches are really interesting because well, generally any uh, Game Boy glitch is just fucking bizarre. Yeah, I gotta say the fucking crazy shit you can do with like arbitrary code execution and stuff is just mental. Yeah. It's more so crazy that people figured it out than the fact that it actually exists. <laughs> yeah, like for some people games are a puzzle on how to break them. I'm going to say Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time is like my favourite game for, despite the fact that I've never played it, which is a crime in itself, but um, it's my favourite game for like watching for just the spectacular things people do to that game to, to break it for speedruns. Yeah, are you familiar with low percent speedruns? I am, but I don't I don't specifically know the definition. I have seen Basically, a few low, low percent is beating the game as quickly as possible while using the least amount of like things or items or mm. doing or accomplishing the least amount of stuff in the game and doing Still the least it. amount in the game. So arbitrary code execution counts as low percent, yeah. Yeah. Oh, for like, sake. I think I think it's uh, Ocarina of Time where it has a 14 hour or something like that low percent speedrun. Because if a new strategy is discovered that takes longer, but technically accomplishes less yeah, stuff they, they in the game... Yeah, they have to take that tactic, yeah. That tactic becomes the new... Yeah, because, like, so, for, every, for every new item... So, like, if you can do a glitch, but it requires you to get, like, the burr, whereas another tactic wouldn't, but it takes much longer, you can't do the new one because it requires the burr. Yeah. I think I think those sort of speedruns are so cool. I just I love it's one of the reasons I love speedrunning so much. It's just these like ridiculous sort of out of the blue goals that people come up with to, to impose upon themselves to make the game more interesting. It just it's so cool what people find through doing stuff like Basically, that. People discovered that in Ocarina of Time, I think it's Ocarina of Time. It almost definitely is. That's like the most speedrun Zelda game. It's either Ocarina of Time or Majora's Mask. I don't remember which one. But the uh, they discovered that when Link is holding up an item out of a chest, uh, he is actually missing a frame in his animation, 
Bernie that, moves very yeah. slightly, doesn't he? Yeah, he moves very slightly backwards. Yeah, yeah. And if you do that and just wait for, like, a day... It'll pass you through it, a collision, will it? <laughs> yeah, it'll pass you through a collision, and you'll be able to complete the game with less items. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That I, even though it takes ages, it's <laughs> technically the best speedrun Yeah, Yeah, isn't, isn't, that, isn't that, like, that one little bit, that one trick, like, four hours of the run? I think so. It's fucking crazy, yeah. And they, I think they do it multiple times. Yeah. It's such a cool thing like that, yeah. Because it's like, under normal play, even under slow playing the game, you would never notice that that one frame is missing. You'd never notice that you'd move back. You, you literally have to wait like 10 minutes to see any movement whatsoever. Yeah. I should add that to Gungeon. <laughs> Epic, epic Zelda reference, am I right, guys? Yeah, stuff like that is so fucking cool when people figure out these weird strats for things like that. I love it. Exactly, yeah. I gotta say, like, um, I um, I got into Doom Eternal speedrunning when that game came out just because I, I, I've i never had a game that I was really invested in that had only just come out that I wanted to speedrun. Like, I wanted to be on the ground floor of a game. And Doom Eternal seemed like a really good one because I'd seen the Doom 2016 yeah, I mean, runs. Being, being on the ground floor is really good because then you get money when the, uh, when like uh, an investor comes and buys you out. <laughs> and buys you out for your speedrun. But um, in, in that game... It was just, like, I remember watching as a guy on YouTube called Carl Jobs that does a lot of videos covering speedruns. Oh, yeah, Carl's good. Yeah, Carl's yeah. Neat. Um, and he did a video before Doom Eternal came out saying basically, like, oh, this run's good. This this game's going to be nothing like Doom 2016. It's going to be nowhere near as broken. It's going to be a lot more about skill and mechanics. He was so wrong. Goddamn Doom Eternal was so fucking broken, and it was awesome. Um, like, the world record speedrun is, like, 26 minutes. Um... I got a I got a sub one hour run. That that was like my stopping point. That was my ultimate goal. I got a sub one hour. I think my my run was like fifty seven minutes. Um, yeah. But I also uh, contributed a decent amount to the community in the fact that I discovered like two or three different alternate strategies that were quicker than the existing ones for various glitches. Um, You're so cool. And I gotta say, I was hyped as fuck. Like the um, there's a series I think it's on Gamespot. I can't remember the exact channel where it's like developers watching their game speed run. It's like a, a series of games, and they did do Eternal. And the they always have like a little tag at the beginning of the video where it shows like a little bit later on that's really cool, to sort of entice you into watching the rest of it. And the bit that they used was my trick. Oh, and I was like taking the wooden crest. I know, spicy. But I was like, oh my god. I can't believe they used it. I was so happy. It's the only trick out of the ones I uh, founded or like discovered that actually stayed in the speedrun. Like the rest of them all, the faster strategies were uh, discovered. Yeah, what is the trick? Just walk into um, the wall and pull through it? So basically, the, one of the core glitches in Doom Eternal speedrunning is the slope boost, which is essentially in most first-person shooters, when you run off of an edge of something to, like, jump to the next platform, you actually have a little bit more room on the platform than it looks like you have. Cause yeah, just because like a of the grace period. Yeah, exactly. There's, like, a grace period. Uh, because otherwise, you would always jump a little bit too late and fall off. Uh, so the, a lot of games, in fact, almost all games, have a little bit of grace period that allows you to keep jumping even after you've left the platform. But Doom Eternal had a small bug in it in which... When you were in that grace period, you could stack jump inputs. Oh. Um, meaning that you could... Um, also, I'm loving the Infinity launch. Pistol here. You could launch yourself because the game has a weapon wheel that lets you slow down time by about 95% while it's open. So what you'd do is you'd bind jump to your scroll wheel. You would uh, walk off of a ledge or a slope and then you would pull up your weapon wheel and you would scroll like a motherfucker. And it would enter like thousands of jump inputs and your character would fucking fly and get on top of all the, um, on, on top of like all the geometry. And on one of the maps specifically, there's a, a big tower that you're walking into and you've got to go all the way around it. It doesn't take long. It's like a, a minute, maybe two minutes of walking, a little bit of fighting. And on the other side, there's an elevator that you have to go inside and press a button to enter the next stage, next part of the level. Like, it enters a boss fight and plays a cutscene. 
But I found out that if you use one of these slope boosts right through the center of the tower, if you get high enough up, you can launch directly through the geometry because it's got no collision, get inside it, skip the entire walk around, land on the outer edge of the elevator and press the button from outside. And it triggers like the cutscene. It like was just so cool. Long jump. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, I just, although I wasn't the one to discover the glitch and I, I and I was basing it off of things that had already been discovered, the fact that I found that strategy and it still continued to be used is so cool. Yeah. It's like, uh, stuff like, uh, uh, uh Half-Life. I was going to say Half-Life has a ton of bizarre, like, tricks for breaking level geometry. Yeah. As you will know, because you insisted on <laughs> doing them when we were just casually playing. You launched to. yourself out of the map using a lamp. <laughs> Ooh, bouncy bullets as well. That's going to be fun. I love but, stuff like that. Like, in any game I play, I always try and break things. It's just fun. Yeah. Uh, standing on a thing that you're also holding is called prop flying. Yeah, I've seen a, I've seen a bunch a, of clips of prop it flying. It is a speedrun tactic that people use. Like, you'll see speedrunners flying along using a, a fucking forklift pallet <laughs> like a hoverboard. I never got to use the whistle. Might... Hmm. Maybe the... Uh... Okay, so this has three... I think it might spawn turrets, you know. This is just a guess, but so it's an amaconda nest and it has three uses. I think it's going to be something where, like, you use it in combat and it spawns one of the amaconda turrets. I'm gonna try it out. Stop trying to steal my shit, you bastard. Yes. That is exactly- oh, it's dead. <laughs> and you can kill it yourself. Yeah, I'll, um- Oh, you bastard, gonna... you took it. Well, yeah, because you didn't- You, you didn't, um- I didn't do the trick, I know. I know. Yeah. Yeah, I might- I might actually, uh, teach how to use companionizing stuff because it's stuff that spawns friendly enemies is way better if the enemy is companionized and you can't shoot it yourself limited plus cleansed i think limited limited is ammo yeah reduce my ammo but i'm using an infinite ammo weapon right now so i don't give a shit it's like how was i before i i i i did enemy companionizing for Calibur's Eye. Yeah. And I've used it extensively since because Calibur's Eye before that was kind of shit. It was hot trash before that, yeah. It was confusing, it was mostly not very useful, it was just bad. Magic Vulture's Feather. Is, is God Approaches a reference to Squirrel Stapler? I don't know what Squirrel Stapler is. On killing a cursed enemy has a chance game. to drop an item. Holy fuck. <laughs> that could be very strong if we get a lot of curse. And we've already got three. I'm going to be looking to increase my curse by any means necessary. It's kind of annoying that I got cleansed, actually, just before this, because it removed all the curse that I had. Which I think was only one, but still. Hmm. What, what did you have the curse from? Um, I don't remember. I definitely got it from an item I picked up. Um, oh, it was well, from... You have, the, no, you have I, three. You have three. There's an item already? You have three curse. I do. Yeah, because the cleansed modifier, uh, it, it isn't all curse. It only removes like one to like two levels of curse. These bullets have been subjected to the effects of aging, a recurring thing of the gungeon. Okay, I don't know what that does, but we'll find out. I need more health again. I'm, I'm really bad at just getting hit a lot at the moment. Yeah, you don't want to die on this run. What's this do again? Uh, all guns are reduced to one bullet clips, and they gain damage for the amount of shots that were removed from the clip. So it won't do anything to this gun? You know, it won't do anything. Um... Both of those are actives. I yeah, mean, I know. I can't remember. Th this one re-rolls, this one spawns chests, right? I think I think D-Chest gives you an active item slot. So I do this. Yeah, it does. Because I remember because Kyle was talking about, like... Yeah, it's a, it's a box. So you put the item in the box and it gives you more active item slots. 
<laughs> oh, hello. <laughs> the fuck is this? I think I think this is from Sparpy. He made a, a gun that mimics your starter gun, but huge. Fair enough. <laughs> That's pretty funny. A lot of Sparpy stuff is really bizarre, but really impressive. <laughs> I was saying about speedrun tactics. Um, it pierces too, it's so good. It reminded me about uh, in Portal 2, there is a something called a portal push force. Where oh, if you I've are, heard about this, I think. Carry on, though. If you are, I think it's when you're in a portal. Yeah. Uh, and it closes or something like that. There is a, a little force that will push you out of it. And speedrunners realized that if they saved and quit and reloaded the save while this was happening, they s fucking spammed it. Oh, and it took a while, but they could use it to get huge momentum. And it's, it's used for, like, minimum portals, isn't it? Yeah, something like that. There's also, um... I did actually learn a couple uh, speedrun tracks because I thought it was... Uh, funny. Speedrun tracks on what? Uh, oh, tricks in, in Portal, Portal. Two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I end in Half Life Two. I I remember you I showed me someone how to do, Part One. I learned how to do um back hopping in yeah, yeah. Half Life Two just for the hell of it because I just wanted to be able to say that I'd done it. So it came in handy when you tried doing Portal speedruns. Ah, uh, you can't back hop in Portal. Oh, no, they fixed it, didn't they? There, there is a way yeah. to get around it, though, right? You, start, you can still do it, but it's a bit of a workaround. Yeah. All of the glitches in, in Half-Life are doable in Half-Life and in Portal 1, but not in Portal 2. Because uh, they, cha they changed how momentum and physics work in, in Portal 2 to be more cohesive and just more fun. Which, uh, by nature, fixed a lot of bugs. Like, uh, you can't prop fly. Yeah, not as a. F you can kind of. I think. I think in Portal Two and other games you can prop fly, but you've well, got to like in, pick it up, jump, pick it up, jump, pick it up, jump, and like do that, it over and over not, again. That's not called. Cool. That's not prop flying. That's cube hopping. That's a different ah, technique. Thank okay, you very okay. much. Yeah, that's called cube hopping, and it is possible in in Portal Two, but it's a lot more difficult. I've I've done it. And fuck, fuck is it annoying. Why didn't I just why didn't I just teleport to the other side? <laughs> I saved literally nothing by doing all of that, god damn it. Also I love this yeah. giant gun. This is hilarious. I've I've done cube hopping in both portal games. There's no reason to ever do it for a normal player, but it's like I just wanted to do it. Yeah. And I'll never do it again because cube hopping in Portal 2 is fucking annoying. I'm gonna say it's like with um, with Skyrim. I learned a bunch of the random speedrunning tricks you can do on Skyrim because they're just fun. Like being able to phase through walls using balls. Yeah. Um. What was I gonna say? Uh. I also um in in Portal Two I learned how to funnel fly. Funnel fly. Yeah, there's a glitch with the uh, funnels in Portal 2, the testing element, yeah. that carry you, where you can, if, you, if you do it right, you have to be very careful, but if you do it right, you can leave them and still have, like, the anti-gravity uh, effect. Yeah, 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 because I, th I think I watched a video about that. Isn't it because, like, when it gives you the anti-gravity effect, it's a check of zero or one to whether you can have gravity or not, and there's a way to, like, mess up the game so it thinks it's a one when it shouldn't be. Yeah, it's to do with like crouching and stuff. And I, I, that's probably my favorite one because it doesn't rely on an insane reaction time. Yeah. It just relies on you setting it up properly. Yeah, I like those ones as well. Oh god. That's another thing that I did a lot of in um, in Doom speedrunning. Again, a lot of these tricks ended up being surpassed by better glitches that were found later on. But um, finding finding um, setups was something that I did a lot of, like finding consistent ways to do certain glitches. Like there was this one glitch where um, 
if you performed a um, a killing blow, I can't remember what they're called in that game now. Um, chest is charged. Hmm? Chest is charged. Oh, well, that's good. Hehehe, <laughs> oh, that rolls it with a key on. Okay. Good to know. Um, but yeah, um, one of the glitches when you perform like a finishing move on a uh, on a zombie, uh, like a, a like one of the default sort of basic enemies, if you are on the right sort of terrain, it would actually glitch you under the ground and you could get underneath the level. Um, but it was very, very, very hard to perform. It just, it was really janky. It was really, really hard to get the timing right and get the, the zombie had to be facing the right way and in the right position. Um, so the, on one of the levels called um, Super Gore Nest, oh God, oh, which is a brilliant name for a level. Um, I found a, a really, really useful setup that basically made it like a 100% success rate, which was fucking nice. awesome. But then, like I said, the glitch got surpassed by a an even better glitch. Basically, on the same level, they found a glitch where if you used a dash into a specific wall while lowering your frame rate to below 30, you'd just pass straight through it. But only if your frame rate was nice. below 30. You know, speedrunning is just a microcosm of the inevitable march of human progress. <laughs> it really is. Um, sure, the craziness that can be me, achieved. Last, last recording, which was like half an hour ago. Oh, I should have taken all that curse. Fuck. Take a what curse? I should have taken all the curse oh, in this room to get more items. Um. So, there. So, uh, I last recording we were talking about the amount of research I've done, and doing research on weapons and stuff really makes you realize how little people fucking know what they're doing. <laughs> We're just like, making shit up as they go along. There's this one pistol. It's from like the 1890s or something. And it is a 40 shot uh, semi automatic pistol. Fucking hell. And it is really impressive for the time, but also unbelievably dangerous. <laughs> Basically. This um this pistol had a, a chain inside of it. And the chain was covered with uh the little capsules that you would put bullets into. And you would pull the trigger and it would fire a bullet and cycle the chain. Yeah. Remember, your aura doesn't kill the targets. Yeah. But that would be a really cool uh, interaction if Bunny wanted to be sadistic and torture himself with unnecessary features. I can't remember how to get this one. I think you have to bounce it a few times. That is way too narrow of an angle. Ah, okay. okay. Uh, ribbon white. Can pierce walls and enemies. Nice. But yeah, the thing boy. with this... The thing with this gun is that it would the only way to it was all and all self-contained because obviously you can't let the the person touch the chain that would be dangerous <laughs> so to reload the gun you had to open up a little capsule on the back and slot bullets into the chain Jesus. but you obviously can't reach all the the capsule. Uh, so, all the capsules from this one opening. So you had to cycle the chain to bring the bullets in line with the reloading port. Fucking hell. Ooh, I got two of the shared things. Shared key and shared, bull uh, shared blank. That's pretty cool. And I also now got enough keys to open everything that I just destroyed. Yay! Really smart move. Idiot! <sighs> so, the thing with this this pistol is that you the only way to cycle the chain is to pull the trigger. Oh, no. <laughs> and it has 
and and pulling the trigger slams forward this this pin to hit the the uh, bullets and fire them right yeah the thing with that is that they had a um a safety mechanism right the safety was just a simple lever attached to a hook that would catch the pin before it hit the um the casings fucking hell Yeah, that, that does sound like a moronic, very dangerous uh, idea. You'd be loading bullets into the back of this thing and pulling the trigger and just hoping that you didn't accidentally nudge the full <laughs> limsy little hook that is the only thing stopping the gun from going off. I wonder, if there's a, I wonder how many recorded deaths there is from that thing. I don't think there were any, uh, because nobody was stupid enough to use it. Well, that's fair. There's a lot of just bizarre prototypes, and I love them. Yeah, I, I really like looking into stuff like that, where it's like things that could have been that just never made it past conception, really, because the prototype of them was just like failure. Like the seven barreled Luger. Oh my god. I went down a really obscure rabbit hole for that. Basically, a m man named Mr. Schernecker, uh in the 60s went on a huge fucking bender. He probably took a shit ton of cocaine. <laughs> and, and he made a bunch of some of the craziest wet guns I've ever, ever seen. Honestly, I would probably describe him as a, a mad scientist. <laughs> nice. And he did this just wild shit, like making a Luger with seven barrels. Yeah, that seems quite unnecessary. And the thing is, instead of chambering seven rounds, but one for each barrel, he chambers one round with seven slugs in it. What? <laughs> you heard me. One round with seven slugs. Hmm. <laughs> I think technically the term for that would be septiplex, but I don't think anyone, because the term for the term for bullets that contain multiple slugs is multiplex rounds, and usually people don't go higher than three. Yeah, I've not even heard and, of going going um, above two. Yeah. Oh my god, yes. The mini Nomicon with a synergy as well. Absolute insanity. So, the thing with, with these is that people call uh, triple multiplex bullets triplex rounds. And they're usually used for guns that have three barrels. And they are rare. As far as I know, they're rare. I think the most common ones are used by uh, oil drillers, actually. Because uh, if an oil drill gets stuck against hard rock, it literally shoots its way out. But... So anyways, they start blasting. Yeah, literally. Uh, oil drills have guns on them. Look at that piece of meat. <laughs> it's a big meat. Um, the thing... So, so I think, based on the fact that a three bullet is called a triplex shot, a, a seven bullet would probably be called like a septiplex, but I don't think anyone's actually used the term. No. In fact, uh, Schoenacher's... Seven Barrel Luger and his Septiplex bullets are so like obscure that I I couldn't find it on any like website that anyone's ever heard of. I it wasn't on found Wikipedia myself... or anything. No, it wasn't. I found myself looking through um 
forum posts from 2013 on a forum for rare ammunition collectors discussing their their collections. Oh. And I mean, thank goodness that those that there are people who do that because otherwise I'd be shit out of luck. Yeah. I also, um, while looking into Schoenecker, found some obscure patent documents from the 19... Uh, 1970s or 60s. Again, it astounds me that I was... I, have to, I can actually say, yeah, I was looking for these obscure patent documents from the <laughs> 60s. Where Schoenecker talks about other shit that he's made. And, and pants the idea of... What do you, what do you fucking call them? Uh, I'm trying to remember what batshit insane word he used. It was like, uh... What was it? Something crazy. Basically, I, I don't know why all my mini, no mini Nomicon bullets are moving really slowly. Probably because the only ones you notice are the ones that are moving slow and the fast ones just hit a wall and die. Maybe. But... Or maybe it's, like, taking it's... the stats from the RGG. I was just about to say, I think it's something to do with the RGG synergy, yeah. I think I just got unlucky with the low bullet speed on my RGG. Yeah, so... I found these patent documents, and I can't find... I couldn't find anyone else talking about this stuff. Where Schoenecker... He patented these cartridges that have bullets one after the other in a in a casing. How would that work? It was like I, I read it to make I I read through the patent to make sure I wasn't seeing things. Yeah, that doesn't and seem he like, like that. He was like, yes, the bullets are connected by a weak a weak metal fusing that disintegrates under heat. The propellant force is applied to the first. I don't know. Oh, I'm making him British. He was from the Canary Islands, but it <laughs> makes it sounds better for a um. It sounds better for a mad inventor. It does. And plus, I don't actually know what accent people from the Canary Islands have. You just assume everyone's um, got a British accent. It's fine. Yeah, I kind of do. It's like, yes, these. Uh, the main propellant force acts on the first bullet in the chain and leads the other ones out the barrel with it. What the fuck is going on on screen? I don't know. Very slow meat. Yeah, I know that feeling. <laughs> that sounds like a fucking, um, like an advert for, uh, Erectile dysfunction. Do you have slow meat? <laughs> no, sir. I have fast meat. That is my problem. <laughs> um. But yeah, his diagrams and his description. I read through the descriptions to make sure I wasn't misreading the diagrams. And he just has like five to seven bullets in one casing, not side by side, but one after the other in <laughs> sequence. And the idea was that the, when the powder, when the propellant goes off, it pushes out the first bullet, which drags the other ones behind it in a chain, and the pressure of firing causes the bullets to come apart in the barrel. Okay, and no. basically fire seven bullets at once from one barrel. I, as far as I can tell, these were never actually made. Except, Schoen, I mean, Schoenecker probably made prototypes, but they've been lost to time. Yeah, yeah, How, What year was this again? Like the 1960s, 1970s. Okay, okay. There's a pit there? Room design. Good to know. Passion. Um... Yeah, so the thing... And he did so many variations on the concept in his patent document, too. <laughs> he really he like, wanted to make it work. What if we... Okay, so this works. 
obviously. So what if we made it less bullets, but they were bigger, or more bullets, but they were smaller? Or what if we made one big bullet followed by four small bullets? <laughs> or what if, right? Hear me You're out, just guys. throwing what shit we, at the wall. What if we did it with flechettes, where he did it with flechette rounds as well? Fucking or he hell. called them arrow bullets, but yeah, they're push, flechettes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he did a diagram where he was like, yes, this will fire sh seven flechettes. And then he did one where it's like one big bullet followed by like five flechettes. <laughs> and then he was like, okay, so hear me out. So this is one that has five, it's, it's a five bullet deep cartridge, right? Five bullets deep. What if I combine this with my Septiplex cartridge and do seven chains of five bullets deep in one round. <laughs> oh, this run is going to hell. That's the an item, the item that I made that makes bullets move slower but shoot at enemies. Will it take on my um, effects of the gun that I have? Uh, the I, item that I, I have. I don't think, I don't think it adopts bullet effects because it would be way too powerful. But it adopts like aura bullets though, so... <laughs> Never mind. Never mind. It does. It does adopt bullet effects. I forgot. Fucking fire! Get off me, you hot shithead! Get off me, you hot shithead. God damn. So where the fuck am I going now? Where's my other chest? But Down here. That's probably the most insane thing I've, I've ever seen. Where he yeah. made... One, one cartridge containing seven lines of five bullets each to be fired <laughs> procedurally, to be fired all at once in a in a procession. We should like te use this as a teachable moment for like prospective weapons designers. <laughs> be like, look at this man. Don't do any of this. Don't do a Schoenecker. I love this man, I love him. I want to know what else he's done, but I, I oh, want to I'm finish sure like, going through the patent documents first. I'm sure it's a and, lot. And none of, none of this is on is on like Wikipedia. You wouldn't, or like any other website that I could find, like it was barely even mentioned on that Ammo Collectors forum. You wouldn't know it if you hadn't have like found his name on a patent document and looked yeah. through it. Oh, um. That's so this a... is what, um, it's obviously fired one of Bunny's uh, spore rockets, which it shits out spores behind itself. But it's moving so slowly that it constantly fires more and more spores. Yeah, and you have bouncy. That's beautiful. That is. I'm surprised how little it's lagging. I'll be honest. Beautiful's one word for it. It's a hot mess. Yeah, you big sexy mess. Oh, did you <laughs> see a whip there? I did. You've gotten, like, this has got to be an active, right? Yeah. So you've gotten so many actives. I have. It is my curse. Right, let's go fight the boss and potentially kill him in a single shot. Well, actually, let's try and get some health first. Try and buy that HP. It just, that, that is genuinely... Oh, play me, I'm yawning a little. Because I'm an old man who needs his beauty sleep. Uh, At first I thought he said yeah. beefy sleep then. I was like, what the fuck is that? And I realized Sorry. what he actually said. I thought he said beefy what did you... sleep. Oh no, yeah, beefy sleep is when you like sleep against a really buff guy's abs. It's really hot. I was more so thinking it's sleeping while eating a beef sandwich. Yeah, no, I sleep against my, I sleep against my beef. His name is. Uh, I was trying to think of a name of someone I don't actually know, <laughs> because that would be awkward if uh, if I did know name someone with someone. that name. Yeah. I don't know where to. Go. Oh no, it's happening again! Run. <laughs> This is one of the weirdest things I've ever seen in this game. 
It's, I've it's never just, seen something like this before. Oh, the particle effects are just going absolutely wild. I love it. There's a key in here somewhere. I'd like to grab it. Oh, oh God. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> that was so cool. Oh. <laughs> How did this happen? I don't know. <laughs> Fucking game. <laughs> I mean, I don't think you really needed that synergy chest. But it could have been... Yeah, it could have made, given me a swan synergy. It needs to be like with the electric guitar and be called Swan Song. Yeah, Swanergy. Goddamn black holes. Oh! That did a lot of damage. Oh dear, that's a very large black hole. That was a large black hole. It's gone away now, it's fine. Look at, they, they pass through the dragon and then shoot back at it. Yeah. Hide behind the chest, yes. Ah, no! Oh. <laughs> you betrayed me. a technique I recommend for people who struggle with the dragon second phase. I mean, if you say you recommend. Like... There's like two things in vanilla game that can spawn chests. The D-pad and what was the other one? Um, there is another one, I can't remember what it is. I mean, yeah, but like, it's so good though. It is, it's very what? useful. I used it on one of my very, very early Gungeon videos and people were very like, oh my god, this, this is the thing that works. You can, you can also cheese the lich with it. Yeah, anything anything that's like fires a wall of bullets at you, you can use chests to cheese because they can't destroy enemy bullets at all. You can also like cheese his third phase because if he's moving up and down and you can trap him with the chest so he can't complete the attack. Mm -hmm. it's, it's pretty, pretty neat. What the pretty fuck is this? Room wonky. Please fix. <laughs> you need the thing that Fiendfolio has where it puts the room name at the bottom so you can shame whoever made it. Hmm. Maybe. But again, uh, it's not actually common for dungeon room makers to put their name in no, the room. No, true. It, that, that would have to then become common practice if we did that, yeah. Yeah, and I'm too lazy. My, mine don't have my name in it, but they do have the word expand in them, so you can tell when they're from expand. Expand dong. Expand dong. Always expand the dong. I did it again. I love that. It's so fucking satisfying. Oh, also, look at my fucking goose. <laughs> Just freaking the fuck out. I mean, that's what geese are like in real life. It is, the neck just fucking flailing around. I mean, have you ever seen a goose? Deadly motherfuckers. Just pick it up by the neck and swing it above your head. You'll be fine. What about the, the geese mace technique? <laughs> but there's so much stuff like that that's like people using animals for weapons <laughs> in history. <laughs> Like, like uh, attach a honey badger to a stick and throw it. At <laughs> yeah, like a like. Genuinely, there was this 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 thing, and this is another thing I know from doing research. It's it's called the fire ox. It was used by uh, the ancient Chinese, where you would t you would attach two spears to the sides of an ox and light its tail on fire and point it at the enemy. Fucking <laughs> hell! And it would just go fucking wild. <laughs> Yes. That's amazing. Not for the not for the ox, but there were also um bird bombs. I've I've heard like, of bird bombs and pigeon bombs. Ro yeah. Rocket. I think they were called like rocket birds and rocket cats. Where like you attach a a small like amount of burning substance to a bird or a cat that lives in a city that you're laying siege to. 
and hope that it sets alight the tree that it lands on yeah. or whatever and causes a fire. Yeah, it yeah. sets alight the, the building that it lands on, yeah. You're about to get yeah, fucking so demolished, fuck. sir. <laughs> yeah. Bye bye. Hello, Satan. Bye bye, Satan. I can I smell your feels. fear. I fucking doubt it. <laughs> we literally skipped left. his second fear as we killed him that hard. Top left. That's anticlimactic. <laughs> Man, my dad has a lot of like sturdy builders tape measures like that. When I was a kid, I would like extend them and see how long I could extend them while keeping them like. I think I think anyone anyone ending. who's who found a tape measure as a child has has done that. Yeah, I've definitely done that. Yeah, but have you ever dual wielded? <sighs> Probably not. That seems like an expert. When I was like, Expert when I was skill. a kid, I did so many things that seem like I, this is obvious. Like everyone's done this, but I did so many things that seemed like good ideas, but was so fucking stupid. <laughs> like, I don't actually have too many memories of me doing really, really dumb shit. I I would take the screws out of my dad's equipment just to mess with him. No, because I was like. I'm an engineer! I can dismantle <laughs> things! And I would, like, take the screws out of his, like, equipment. It's like, converging! Out of, vice, <laughs> out of, like, a vice or in more serious uh, situations. Mm. Out of something like, uh. Like an, uh, an angle grinder. Oh, God. Yeah, uh. Fortunately, I think he always, like, if it was something serious, he tended to notice very quickly and, and fix it. But I'm realizing, like, more and more how much shit I did was incredibly dangerous. Yeah, like, if he hadn't a noticed one day, he could have fucking, like, chopped up his hand or some shit. He already has chopped up his hand. Oh. Well, fair. Was that your fault? No, um, he, he had it reattached, but he, uh, he was using a table saw, right? Lovely. And he was pushing wood into the table saw, and he slipped. Oh god! Sounds awful. And his hand, his hand went into the table saw, and he cut it like between his fingers, like right down the middle. Lovely. And like it was like the the, the half of his hand was just hanging off. He was uh, airlifted by. Uh, Helicopter to the hospital, and they reattached his hand. And he, his hand works fine, but he still like doesn't have 100% feeling in it. Oh yeah, was... yeah, that'll that'll destroy some nerves. This is a very long time ago. Yeah, and um, my girlfriend's uh, dad. <laughs> this little shotgun here is going on. But yeah, my girlfriend's dad, he chopped off the top of one of his fingers because he was oiling a motorbike chain and obviously he turned on turned on the chain so it can fully get oil all over it. And then he spilt some, so tried to rub it off with his finger. On a moving motorbike chain, he thought he'd rub it off with his finger. And so it took off the top of his finger. Yeah, but like... Dad told me that his hand doesn't, he still doesn't have like proper feeling in half yeah. of his hand. There is absolutely no way if you reattach a body part that it's going to be back to normal. My family has a really bad history with right hands. Oh, like Lord. both of my, both of my parents have suffered some sort of injury to their right hand. Like, and not like just like spraining it, but something serious. Like Hell. my dad cut half of it off. My mother was caught in a house fire when she was a child and still has like burn scars on her on her hand. And uh, she's lucky that um, my granddad got her out of there, but she was burned all up her up her up her arm and mm. her hand and the skin is still like very shiny and very just burn scars. Yeah, it doesn't so it doesn't on, grow on, back right, yeah. I'm just waiting for my turn. I just about to say, what, what, what's been yours so far? <laughs> it's kind of like this. It's kind of like Skywalkers, you know, in Star Wars. <laughs> yeah. Do you have something like that recurring family injury? 
honestly, my family history for injury is actually like pretty good. Like, we there, okay, there isn't anything that bad. Bitch. Yeah, I'm so healthy. <laughs> like, there's no, there's no like recurring disease in my family from what I know of. There's no like weird like thing thing like that with the right hand or anything. Yeah, it's just something I thought was interesting. Yeah, something neat. But anyways, we are we are done. That was a very fun run by the end of it. A lot better than the than last week's episode. I apologize for that shit show, but there you go. Either way, um, yeah, it's been fun. I hope you guys did enjoy, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.